But what's going on in Sila's mind uh, as she is powered down now? What's she remembering? What's she thinking about? As Sila is taking in all of the events of the last adventure, the solar flares trying to maintain control of the ship, she is reminiscing about what led her to this point. And she is going back to a time when her emotion processors were being rebooted prior to Torch asking her if she would be up for the mission that she may not have ever done before, but was training and preparing to do in all of the window before this adventure. Yeah, absolutely. So as she sits there uh, processing and powering, uh, the memory sort of, uh, since since her external processes are powered down, the memory sort of uh, becomes fuller and more vivid. And we're going to, we're going to take a few minutes here to journey with Sila on this memory uh, of what was going on that brought her here to this ship and this mission. So we find uh, Sila 919 in her memories, and we find her as she is walking out of, uh, of a building that is full of other Manzagene. This is a, uh, is a, a place where uh, various upgrades, we could say, although we know how the Manzagene as, as a whole sort of generally feel about physical changes, but it's a place where software uh, can be updated, uh, where any sort of uh, severe physical uh, injuries or destruction or whatever can be dealt with. Uh, it, is, it is sort of, I guess, in some ways, uh, akin to a Manzagene version of a hospital uh, in some ways, but also like an auto sh shop, but I don't want to compare people to cars, you all know what I'm trying to say. Uh, Sila919, you are leaving this building. Tell us a little bit more about what you just did inside. At certain times, the months again, they need upgrades. And Captain Sila919 previously, Sila919 required some emotional updates to her system because there are some things that are not translating such as empathy and compassion. So she was trying to have those systems rebooted and logged into the system before she head off with Torch. And how is she, we'll talk about what the text said in just a second, but how, how are you feeling now that you've had that process done, that you've had those emotional uh, circuits and programming sort of rebooted and updated a bit? How are you feeling? Do you feel very different than you did before? Now that Sila has the ability to process what those upgrades were, she is wondering what is the point? And and that's sort of what the text told you as well. They did some upgrades and some updates and they you know, made sure everything was sort of where it was meant to be in terms of your processing and your programming. Uh, they did mention that, that they didn't notice anything particularly uh, out, of, out of whack. Uh, there were some, you know, like I said, some processes that needed updating, uh, but nothing seemed to be terribly, terribly wrong. So they, they let you know that if you continue to uh, experience problems with your emotional processes, please return at any time. One must wonder what is the point? Well, uh, the point, of course, is to be able to enjoy and experience the full spectrum of emotions, of feelings, that which our counterparts in the other cultures feel on a daily basis. Our experience here is both different and the same as theirs, and our emotional circuits assist in that experience. But why the oil? Ah, this is a uh, peculiar habit of some of our cousin cultures, uh, that strong emotion often brings about a expulsion of bodily fluids and liquids. This was the closest we could get for Manzagene. 
one must wonder why they do not use words and instead use these feelings. The uh, the text sort of uh, pauses for a moment and and thinks about it, and finally says, "I have never considered the." true function of feelings beyond the aesthetic. Uh, I do enjoy beautiful things and they seem more beautiful with feelings, but on a uh, purely objective and logical level, I shall have to compute on it. I am preparing for transition to a proper mission, correct? Uh, as far as we have been notified, yes. So would it not be for the best for me to be able to communicate with my words instead of with peers? Yes and no. Uh, from my experience interacting with uh, uh, cultures with innate emotions, uh, they can impressively read much from body language and the experience of emotions in others. You can communicate much with a tear. I believe that my understanding is that as a Monsagene, I am to be top tier, not shed tears. Can you explain why this is necessary? You say that it conveys an emotion. As I understand, the emotions are sadness and fear and joy. And I don't see how any of these serve a purpose of being the best. And the text sort of pauses again uh, and after a moment says, well, I suppose it all depends on what you decide best is for you, doesn't it? It is going to be my position to lead. It will be my job to be of the utmost emotional intelligence. He starts so, nodding and says, yes. How is it more intelligent to cry than to truly feel and solve? This will likely sound strange, Sila 919, but in my experience, understanding something through study and data uploads is very different from understanding something based on your personal experience. If you are to lead and lead others both of Manzagene and non-Manzagene origins, it likely will be important for you to understand and have experienced the emotions that they will undoubtedly exhibit during their missions with you. At this point, uh, while you're sort of thinking and feeling the tears and having this conversation, Sila 919, uh, your, your mentor uh, who, who has been sort of interacting with you and, and training with you and going through things with you, uh, who uh, is, arrives to sort of collect you, to pick you up uh, from, this, from this upgrade. Uh, and why don't you, do you, wanna, do you wanna tell us a little bit about uh, your mentor? As a Monsagene and an android, I do not remember my, ori my origin. I just remember one day waking up and being silent 919. I don't have what the humans refer to as parents, but I have guidance and 
Mabel, my mentor, has been there since the beginning. And I do not understand why she sends me out to do these tasks that require emotions and feelings when actions are right there. Uh, and that is likely why she encouraged you to uh, to have this upgrade. Uh, so she arrives and she sees you with the with the tears and the clearly uh, engaged but somewhat flustered and maybe a little sort of uh, off balance tech. Uh, you two having this conversation uh, and she laughs. She lets out sort of this this joyful laugh uh, and says. <laughs> My apologies. Is she, and she gestures at you, Silas, she's speaking to the text. She says, is she questioning the necessity of emotions? And the tech just nods and says, a fascinating conversation we are having. Would you care to join us? I have time before my next upgrade. Uh, and she, your mentor turns to you, Silent 919, and just sort of looks at you uh, with a, she has, uh, she, the face that she wears today, because she does uh, quite frequently change her face. Uh, the face that she is wearing today is that of an older Manzagene woman. Uh, and uh, beautiful sort of dark skin with just, uh, with crow's feet and, and some laugh lines. Uh, and it is just a warm face. And she turns it to you, uh, Silent 919, and sort of quirks, quirks an eyebrow as if to say, you know, do you want to continue this conversation? If you were to upgrade my systems and expect me to go into a world that is run by such weak people that their emotions lead all things, I would expect that you would tell me why this is necessary. Do you expect me to go and to leak oil and get my way? Or do you expect me to make valid points? Your uh, mentor smiles uh, as this is likely a conversation that you have had some version of several times at this point. And she says, you well know, Sila 919, that I expect you, such a capable individual, to do both. I don't, I don't like Why, why do you program these oil so? I don't, I don't, it's, why is it so much to come now? Why is there so much, why does it feel as if my circuits are overloading? Why does she it feel as if there's you. nothing I can do? She comes <laughs> up to you and she takes her hands and she says, Sila 919, look at me. Take a deep breath. You have seen others do this. We need it not, but we can aspirate. Try it with me. It seems strange. She's just looking directly into your eyes. And after a few breaths, she turns to the tech and, and thanks him uh, and says to you, come. It is too much sometimes. But I think, I think you might enjoy this. And she leads you out of the building and, uh, and begins walking you uh, to, a, to a point in, uh, in the city that you have not been. And we should talk about uh, where you are. So you are in uh, a region of Musalia Make sure I get this all right. Uh, you are in a, a region of Musalia known as Nua Nual. Uh, it was, it is sort of the original place that the Musalians uh, began to build their civilization here on the planet after they arrived. Uh, it is a very fertile area, grasslands, green, excellent soil. Uh, there are, you know, some, some topographical features that can help with uh, defense and, and plenty of space. And the, the Hyanols uh, who first met 
the original Musalians when they arrived, uh, picked out this spot for them because it was already very open. It was not inhabited by a ton of wildlife that would have been displaced. Uh, and, and it was close enough uh, to some hyenal outposts that they would be able to come and go and assist uh, the Musalians as they set up their very first uh, their very first sort of settlement. Uh, in that, it is also the home of many, many Manzagene. Uh, the the uh, sort of Manzagene uh, center uh, is here. Uh, it's where on those rare occasions that a new Manzagene is created. Uh, it happens usually somewhere here in Nua Nual. Um, there are a few places around that have the capability, uh, but that creation process is very carefully monitored, uh, and so it isn't sort of just done willy-nilly. Um, and so your mentor takes you uh, out, and you leave the, the sort of city limits. It's a busy, busy bustling city. You leave sort of uh, the area around this, this Manzagene uh tech support building, whatever it is. Uh, you pass by all sorts of Musalians and Monsagene and Hyenol and Salansi and Misajai, all, all types in and around this city. You leave the city limits with her and any time that you try to question, if you, if you were to try to question her or ask where you're going or why, she simply tells you to wait and watch. Uh, and eventually you find yourself in an enormous sort of open field. There's a light breeze tall grasses, it's a beautiful day. The sky is, is perfectly clear and you can see the sun shining down brightly. Uh, and once you're there, she sort of lets go of your hand and she says, how are you feeling? I think it's referred to as overwhelmed. She nods and says, one of the less pleasant ones, I will admit. Why don't I... we... Oh, please. The beauty of this place is something that I've never processed before. And there's a calm in the beauty that takes away the Pain. She nods and says, good, good. Can you isolate as much as you are able that experience of beauty? The shape and the textures and the way that they come together is flawless in a way that it's more natural than these feelings. Excellent, excellent. Now, continue to focus on that natural flawlessness and tell me, Silent 919, why do you resist the emotions upgrades? I do not understand why anyone would choose to feel so much. And yet, if they didn't, would they have the experience you are having of this natural beauty? A true appreciation of something that even we Manzagene cannot quite capture in our creations. But with that beauty, there's a pain that is not it cannot be necessary. It cannot be necessary to feel so much pain. It can't, the, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. And the pain makes me appreciate the beauty. Ah, Sila 919, I don't know that I have ever had a student who has come to that realization so quickly. It seems that despite your insistence that you don't understand 
your capability is such that you do understand. You have intuited that without that pain, the beauty would be so much less, so much more clinical, so much more theoretical. Sila919, I am so very excited for you. That's another one that I can't wait for you to feel. I am so excited for you to have experiences. You are a brilliant student. All the data that you process, that you consume, that you upload, you understand, you assimilate so well. But Why do I have to? I can't answer that, Sila919. But I think soon you will be able to. Your experiences will be so much richer than a data upload. You will I, find- Can no, I- hmm? I want to process without pain. Why can't I process without the pain? Why is the pain necessary? If you truly desire it, one of the many gifts that we Manzagene have is that our emotions, though important in my opinion and full and rich like any other culture, they are technically optional. We have the ability to dampen them if you truly desire. But Sila919, if you have ever listened and believed anything that I have taught you over these many years, I hope you will believe this. It will be worth it in the end. And if you can't believe my words, and I wouldn't expect you to believe my words purely on faith, do this for me. Let us find you a mission. Let us find you a task that you can go and accomplish with these emotions, with these feelings intact. And if you return and still truly feel that the negative side of this experience is outweighs in the negative, uh, outweighs the good of having feelings, of having true and full and vibrant emotions, then we can discuss a dampening. Will you do that for me, Sila919? Can you make, can you make the oil stop? I don't, <laughs> I don't want to show a weakness in this It feels like a weakness mixed with a strength that I can't control and I don't want to be at the mercy of my feelings. Why would you upload feelings when I could just use logic? That strength is the key, Sila919. Mm -hmm. Keep searching for the strength. And at this point in the conversation, you both notice uh, you're sort of out a little bit in the middle of nowhere, right? Out in a, in a big open field. Uh, and you both spot uh, a Musalian person uh, approaching uh, from the direction of the city, a, an extremely tall, uh, broad shoulder, sort of triangular torso shaped, dark sort of just dark, dark skin, uh, so, so sort of opposed to the beautiful yellows uh, that you see here, but also just striking. Uh, and it catches your attention and, and uh, they're coming towards you. And I wonder, Sila, what, Sila 919, what, which of the new emotions you may be feeling seeing this beautiful stranger heading in your direction? Your beauty appeals to me, speak. Uh, and they, uh, you say that as right as they step up and uh, your mentor, so, 
your mentor sort of has to uh, cover. She is clearly fully integrated with emotions and she puts a hand up to her mouth, uh, but you can tell she's smiling. And uh, this this uh, Musalian person uh, looks a bit taken aback for a moment and they they sort of look around uh, and and they say, oh, oh uh, um, well, uh, <clears throat> thank, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, of course. And they sort of snap uh, almost to a, to a sort of salute uh, position. Uh, and they say, I have come uh, on behalf of the organization known as Torch. I seek the Manzagede known as Sila 919. Are they present? Oh, we've lost your audio, I believe. That depends. Speak your piece. Uh, and they say, oh, uh, well, <clears throat> if you are, in fact, Sila 919, the Manzagene that I seek, then I have been sent here uh, to ascertain your ability to participate in a special operation on behalf of Torch. And uh, your, your mentor is, before she was sort of hiding her smile, now she is just beaming. I am Sila One One Time and curse these emotions. I am Sila Nine One Nine. Tell me what you need. Uh, they nod and they say, "Excellent." Uh, before I begin the interview process, could I ask uh, who is here with us? Uh, and your mentor turns and says, my apologies. I am Sila 919's mentor. My name is Ton Saya. Uh, and uh, they both sort of nod to each other. Uh, and this Musalian person turns back to you, Sila 919, and says, uh, do I have your approval to conduct the interview in the presence of your mentor, Ton Saya? One would assume that you know that mentor means superior in certain ways, so speak your piece. Uh, and this person nods and pulls out uh, a little tablet uh, and makes a couple of quick strokes on it, a couple of quick notes and says, excellent, then we shall begin. Uh, first, could you please tell me what experience do you have uh, being a part of a ship's crew? Define crew. Uh, positions could possibly include captain and pilot, navigational officer, sensor array and communications officer, engineer, and other. These are all words that are familiar to me. Continue. Have you any experience in any of those positions on a ship's crew? I have entertained these positions in general conversation and with training. I will not disclose my previous employ to you because it is not your business. Uh, and they say, my apologies, Silent 919, but I must insist that they are, in fact, my business, or will be, should you be hired by Torch. But I think I understand your answer. Let us continue. What experience have you with engineering and or mechanical repair? I am a Montsegane. My entire life has been repair. They make a few more notes on their tablet, nodding, seeming satisfied with that one. Uh, one more question for this portion of the interview. What experience do you have uh, in a combat situation? I have experienced many combat simulations. I will not speak about actual combat experience as I do not believe that experience is dictated by said experience, but education put into practice becomes experience. Uh, Tansaya sort of lets out a, a somewhat restrained, but not really sort of exasperated sigh, since that is also a conversation you two have had on many, many occasions. Uh, but the uh, the Torch representative seems, uh, you know, 
happy enough with those with those answers. Uh, and they say, excellent. Thank you for your <clears throat> cooperation. If you will give me one moment, please. And they sort of tap away at their uh, at their tablet and wait. And you can see, uh, you can't really see what's on the tablet. They're keeping that fairly close, but you can see that they have received some sort of response and they nod and they say, excellent. Uh, if it is uh, amenable to you, you will report to Torch headquarters in three days time. Transport will be provided and details uh, as to the specifics of your mission on behalf of Torch will be provided upon your arrival at headquarters. Do you accept this offer of employment? I accept the offer barring that being cordial is not in the agreement. Uh, the slightest, tiniest quirk of the corner of this torch agent's mouth uh, as they say, no, I, I don't believe that that is necessary or expected for this particular mission. Sila 919, it has been a unique pleasure. Thank you. And on behalf of Torch, thank you. You're welcome. So this person puts their tablet away, they turn and they walk back in the direction of the city. And as soon as they are sort of out of eye shot and ear shot, Tonsaya just starts laughing. Cannot control herself laughing. Are you malfunctioning? This just makes her laugh harder. Why are you making that sound? Are you mocking me? <laughs> oh, no, Sila 919, no, I apologize. No, it was, it was good to see you interact with someone outside of our culture. And I think this mission is exactly what you need right now, don't you? How would I know if it's what I need if it's something I've never had? Uh, Tonsaya thinks for a moment and finally says, um, I'm going to ask you again when you get back if this mission was exactly the same. I, or was exactly what you needed, rather. I think it is. But let's talk when you get back. And at this point, uh, the memory sort of begins to to fade a little bit. Uh, the memory is still there, of course, but the sort of active, in-depth processing of it uh, sort of comes to a close. And we are back uh, aboard the ship, a Ber Bertrand ship with Sila in, uh, in, in her captain's chair, plugged in. Do we see any exterior physical change, whether it's you know lights or controls or anything on Sila once she has reprocessed this memory? She reboots her system as she has reached a full charge and looks about for her crewmates. Who are uh, only one of whom is of course there. So why don't we get back to that crew now that we've seen a, seen a bit of Sila's memories. So now that we're back, let's go ahead and go with Invicta and Ikemba, uh, back to, and Bertrand, back to, can't forget Bertrand, back to the back of the ship uh, where the cargo hold is and the water tanks are. Uh, when you all get back there, uh, immediately it becomes clear that one of the tanks must have not a huge, but not an insignificant crack because there's probably about, I don't know, maybe... 10, maybe not quite that much, maybe five to eight centimeters of water uh, in this room on the floor. 